And we are back for our next installment of Bloody Waters. Now, as we stated last time, that was the end of it for our Carthian brethren. Now, we are seeing the other side of the coin with our Invictus group. Let's go ahead and start with Envy Rose with her character. Hi, Envy again. I am playing as... What did I name her? Ventress. Yeah, Ventress. Um, I guess You're, a physical description, right? If you want, I... And also, I do believe your character sheet actually said Athena. It did. I didn't want the name. That was just auto-generated. Okay. Thing. Um, she's 5'5", five a five, couple of tattoos up her arm, uh, tribal, uh, long black hair always tied into, um into a long braid um a bit of um what is it what did you say two-faced type of character you never know what she might do always on the random all right and uh what covenant covenant yes venture no yeah venture there that, you go that's yes. clan <laughs> Invictus? There we go. <laughs> there we go. Gandhi. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So I'm going to be playing uh, Sighelm Orfarson, a member of the now disbanded uh, Varangian Guard. Uh, he has spent the better part of um, most of his existence since then asleep in the dirt. Uh, he uh, is not exactly pleased with waking up and, um, well, sp got stabbed many times after uh, he attempted to stab people out of anger for waking up as a vampire and not, you know, uh, not ending up in Valhalla with the rest of his brothers. Um, as of now, he is finally, you know, woken up and realized, all right, this is, I guess this is just what life is now and uh, he's now attempting to integrate into society <laughs> quote unquote the vampiric society or the the all night society whatever that book calls it um initially he signed up with the order to try to understand his condition um still technically part of the order but then also found work with the invictus basically as an enforcer if you need someone dead well, he was a soldier. He's still a soldier. Hey, right, and now we're going to go to Live Spark. Um, and I am playing um, um, a character who is a Dampir, Ventru, but um, goes by the name of Ethan Trent. Um, he looks older, um, but his actual age is kind of a slightly indistinguishable. He's slightly more capable than um someone that looks his age should be um sort of white hair uh bearded um has a scar over one eye um slightly um kind of embitter embittered towards the world um but doesn't um uh sort of uh, doesn't suffer fools kindly all right, now we're gonna go on to Nappy Kitty. My character's name is Yasmin Bayrak. Uh, she is the social butterfly of the group. Uh, the Before being transformed, she was what you would consider a mousy, not a uh, bit of a wallflower type girl until one night she was seduced <laughs> uh she is very she was very weak-willed and through one wonderful and torturous night she was then transformed uh she is now a deva part of the lancia sanctum uh she owns a club called the thorn her features are she has a very classic pinup look white skin red lips black hair cinched waist and as her sire um 
has kind of taught her uh, that the living, it sucks, and being undead is no different, so you might as well just live it up. And now we are to our final member, but not least, Pooter. Hello, uh, my character's name is Karem Hakanzade. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, he's uh, the scholar of the group. He's very, very bookish, likes to read. Um, he's with the Lancia et Sanctum as their lore keeper. Uh, so he, like in, in before he was a vampire, he was uh, the type that would, you know, sit in front of the fireplace, glass of wine in one hand, book in the other. It's not too much different after become a vampire, except the glass is glass of wine is not wine anymore. <laughs> uh, so yeah, he, he generally wears black just because he likes to just, uh, what's the word? Play into the role of being a vampire now. So he wears, you know, black suit, black turtleneck. Uh, he's got um, mustache and kind of stubble and somewhat slicked back hair bit of salt and pepper to it all right now this night we actually already covered a bit of this night but we're going back to the beginning of the night before the fire started so Ethan what are you doing at this time um, so, um, aware that there's something wrong, uh, kind of contagion circulating the city, um, and, um, essentially trying to find out what's, what's happening, what's going on in the world, but, um, just doing bits, bits of research where possible. All right, give me a intelligence plus... Um, investigation. <clears throat> Two successes. Two. It, it's taken a while. A lot of reports... All the reports that you find... Uh, take this mysterious illness all the way back to Brazil. There's not a lot of information beyond that other than a blog, a couple of blog posts from a Facebook page or Twitter account uh, by some people from, you know, California that had some odd adventures while in Brazil during the Olympics. And they, you know, they make comments about how there w they encountered a witch that was using kidneys to purify it, uh, purify a demon, quote, end quote. And then they make co they make mention about how when they were leaving, they heard announcements of a new disease that had been make started making its way through Brazil not too long after that whole incident with the witch. But obviously these are like blog posts, you know, they barely have any traction, so, you know, user's discretion, so to speak. Okay. But um... Go ahead, sorry. Oh no, I was gonna say sort of make a um make it something of a note of what's maybe worth considering, what might be worth looking into, but otherwise sort of writing off bits is just essay and stories just growing in the telling. Alright. Once you finish up your little bit of research, because that does take a couple of hours to go ahead and do um, while you're doing that, we'll go ahead and move on to, uh, Sigheim. 
All right. <clears throat> well, I have no other orders at the moment, so I suppose I continue my patrol. Um, I'm just going to kind of wander where I know kindred are active at. Just searching for people misbehaving or breaking masquerade or whatever. I don't know. All right. Well, you have a couple of um, locations in mind. You have the warehouse near the river or the strait, I should say. It's known to house uh, some feeding stock. There are a couple of other warehouses throughout the city that have um, absconded individuals that are kept there for feeding. There is the thorn that is a gathering ground for your kind. The Elysium is usually pretty empty unless Lucius calls for a meeting of some sort. Right, then I suppose we just make a route of whatever I'm closest to, and I'm just going to check as many as I can in the night. All right. Well, the first, the one probably closest to you would actually be the warehouse near the strait. This place is known specifically to you and your coterie being somewhat allied closely with Lucius, he allows you to feed from this special stock. Uh, you know this place tends to contain some revenants specifically used for feeding. Yep. Doesn't really help me. So I suppose as long as there's no suspicious activity going on, Roll me a perception check. All right, what's composure? Let's see if I can roll tonight. You do notice somebody lurking in the distance. It's this uh, person that's wearing a hoodie pulled up really high over their head. Uh, but they're not getting anywhere near close to the warehouse. They don't really seem that interested, but it is kind of weird to have somebody this far out. But nothing immediately sets you off other than, wow, there's somebody here? Hmm. I guess obfuscate, and I'm going to walk up towards him. All right. Just casually as quote-unquote casual as a man walking in armor with a sword slung over his shoulder can be. Uh, <laughs> uh, do you need to make a roll for your obfuscate here? I forget. Because uh, you're using face in the crowd, correct? Just the first dot. I don't remember what it's called. I'll pulling it up right now. I don't, I don't think there's a roll. I don't think so. Uh, yeah, cost none, dice pull none, action instant, duration scene. Alright, so you're just gonna follow him. I am going to make a small roll then? Er, yeah, I'm gonna make a roll here. Let me go ahead and pull up my character sheet here. And by my character sheet, I mean my thing that just says storyteller. A simple yeah, role. basically, as long as that no one expects someone, as long as I'm not in a place where people don't expect anyone else to be, um, everyone basically ignores me. All right. Unless I do something to draw attention to myself. Yeah. Even then, it's if I start attacking someone, they see me. Everyone else still has to roll to see me, though, because obfuscate is stupid. All right, so as you kind of move around, this person just seems to be strolling the straight back or up and down. It, it doesn't seem oh, like sorry. he doesn't really seem like he's doing much other than just kind of pacing. Now, how close do you actually want to get to this person? Uh, close enough to see if he's a mortal or a vampire. So close enough to feel the, to basically 
heal his predatory aura. All right, uh, give me a wits plus empathy roll, actually. <laughs> empathy? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> what is empathy? No. I rolled knows? a one. <laughs> Can I make it a dramatic failure just because I rolled a one? <laughs> All right. Yeah, go right ahead. As you approach this, uh, there is no way of confusing a predatory aura. So you definitely know that this person is a vampire. It feels relatively weak, though. As in, this this vampire is honestly probably maybe a blood potency one vampire. Honestly, not even worth batting an eye out. Probably, even if he was trying to steal blood from the revenants, the revenants would probably tear him limb from limb. Okay, well, make a note that there's a youngster roaming around. You know, they're always good at getting into trouble, so might have to check on him later. And I guess I'll start heading towards the next direction, keeping an eye on him as I leave in case he does shifty things, I guess. All right, well, your next stop would actually be the Thorn, which is going to bring us to our next lovely kindred. What is she doing at this moment? Yasmin. Uh, so Yasmin is in her changing room. Uh, you would see her giant mirror, lights, an array of makeup brushes um, to her right. She has her wardrobe sprawled out. Some would say unorganized, but she knows exactly which piece are exactly where they're supposed to be. Uh, she has an array of wigs up on the walls. So right now she's just getting her hair and makeup done. The energy, she loves it. One of the main reasons why she still is a performer. She doesn't have to be. She makes enough with everybody else performing, the food, the bar. Um, but she greatly enjoys uh, the chaotic energy that's in the back. People rushing, people changing, um, the lights going. So right now she's just getting herself done. She has her lovely companion, her boa, just uh, relaxing <laughs> next to her. Uh, she doesn't come on stage till after the performance. So for now, she's just putting on a feathered boa <laughs> before her performance. All right. Now, uh, out of curiosity, would either of the two remaining ones that I have not spoken to be at the Thorn? Or is that not not their scene? Um, Karim doesn't hang out there too much. He'll go to visit on occasion, but that's not his main scene. All right. So, Yasmin, go ahead and give me a dexterity plus expression or athletics, depending on how you want to do the show. Is it a more athletic show or is it more of a emotional type show? Trying to elicit emotion from people. Uh, tonight's number will be a dance, so but not pole dancing. So I would say expression. Okay. <laughs> it's not one of her better shows, honestly. <laughs> I should have stuck with the pole dancing. <laughs> no, it's not one of her better performances, but 
just the sheer fact that she actually gets out on stage still draws attention. But definitely by the time you're getting off, you're feeling a little let down in your performance, honestly. Mm. No, no. Ah, well, that's what I get when I decide to try something new. Okay, well, next time I know which dance to avoid. Okay. <laughs> Is there anything else that she's going to be doing now that she has finished her performance? Uh, no, uh, she goes back to her uh, changing room, which is also her office. Uh, there is a general room where the other girls and men <laughs> go for to change into their performance acts. Um, so I'll go ahead and just make my way to my office and just... Hmm... I go ahead and... Text... Oh, his name... Uh, Sighelm? Sighelm? Sigh. Sighelm. Uh, I'm gonna call him Sieg. Alright, Sieg. <laughs> Just finished my performance. What are we doing tonight? And I send him a text. Let me, let me figure out how a phone works real quick. <laughs> also... I didn't have phones back in the day. <laughs> also, this presents an interesting question. If you have your metal armor on and your phone is on vibrate... <laughs> 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 clank, clank, clank. <laughs> Where am I? Where would you put yourself on? It would have to be in like a... Or should I send like a, a carrier pigeon? I'm sorry. <laughs> carrier pigeon? Do you prefer I, I don't, pigeon? I don't think we have carrier <laughs> I think the but... only carrier pigeon is my pigeon. <laughs> uh... No, uh, he, he reluctantly probably is forced to have a phone on him. Um, as much as he doesn't like using technology. Well, your phone begin... You're already making your way towards the th thorn when you get this message. I, uh, what are we doing today? Well, I mean, I'm doing what I do every day. I'm patrolling the city. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds fun. Where at? Or I say yes without saying. I mean, I guess. On the corner of Wood words. Street and Wood Street. <laughs> words. Um, no, I'm, I'm going to reply that the the next stop is actually the, uh, the the thorn, as that's the next closest location that people could be getting into trouble at, likely. Oh, excellent! Our hero. I'll see you then. XO, XO, heart emoji. <laughs> I, I, I'm desperate to see how Sigheim... I don't reply. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I continue walking. Uh, once again, he's stunned by me. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's the word I'd use. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to go ahead and move on to Kareem. Uh, uh, so yes, Kareem is probably, like I said, sitting in a big comfy chair. He doesn't have a fireplace, but he had, well, he has a fireplace, but it's not real fire. It's <laughs> one of those images or the little glowing coals. And he's uh, looking into... Uh, what would he be looking into? Well, he has a specialty in the Strix, so he's probably just keeping up on that. Just research, keep himself, keep his mind sharp. All right, so not really looking for anything new. Nothing specific, no, just more like um, he found, hasn't, just found this book. He hasn't read it yet, so he's take, checking it out. All right, well, since you're not really looking for any new information, I'm right. not going to require a role for you to read a book. <laughs> I would assume I you're... I like reading. 
I would assume you're smart enough to know words. Yes. Outside of reading this book that contains some vague references to the Strix because nothing's ever concrete with them. Yeah. Is there anything else that he's going to do? Um, let's see. It's probably early in the night. Yes. Uh, you ha probably haven't even been awake from your day sleep for like an hour yet. Mm, okay. All right. So, well, there's not much. He'll probably spend maybe another hour ish, half an hour, just skimming the book, trying to see if there's any anything that jumps out. If not, then he'll go and take a walk. Where is this walk leading uh, him? Probably going to head. Um, what's it called? Uh, Ventress, did did your shop have a name? Yeah. <laughs> He'll head that way. Oh, what is it? <laughs> Dang it. I didn't write down the names. Yeah, you're, you're just... Yeah. To be continued. <laughs> Probably wouldn't take you too long. I'm assuming most of the coterie tries to stay relatively close to each other. Matrix. That's what I named it. The Matrix. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, uh, Karem and his, his retainer, Hakan, will go and uh, head to the Matrix. This Hakan, is there anything special about him? Uh, not overly. He is uh, just a plain, kind mortal. Um, he's mainly a bodyguard that was assigned. Not assigned. Hi Karim hired him as a bodyguard because he doesn't like to do the fighting himself, if it ever comes to that. So he's a rather imposing figure kind of moves ahead of you and then occasionally drops down back behind you just to make sure that you're in eyesight. Yeah. Relatively stoic figure. He gets the door for you once you arrive at Matrix. He doesn't thank him. <laughs> He's used to it. Follows you in afterwards. Uh, so what am I seeing here? You are seeing a two-story cyber cafe. Uh, you can see up to the second floor. You just see computers everywhere, people shouting with gamer rage and cheering for victory. And you see like a little small, like little deli, you know, bar type of thing off to the side. But as you just mostly see vending machines on the first floor. Like first floor is food, a thing, but just like, neon green lights and like black <laughs> background everything <laughs> yeah so when you say deli very is very it like gamer heaven. <laughs> yes <laughs> it is <laughs> i'm kidding 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 sliced ham no nah, just like a little i have a mini deli cafe off to the side if they don't want junk food and vending machine food and the red there's a red bull machine off to the side because you know you gotta just chug a few drinks of cocaine, you know. Is every there now and then. finger food? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Probably within. Yeah, that's what you see walking in. As he enters, you would be able to detect his predatory aura. So you know that another kindred is near. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'll just go down and meet him and my cute little dog, Loki, he just falls right behind me. Uh, I'm gonna just say he's an all black dingo, but they pretty much look like shaved down German Shepherd, so no one will give him a, a you know, double take or anything. But he just follows me, everyone's kind of just used to me. Got my little leather jacket with the hoodie going on, 
all black, black and green, match my environment. And what does Harem. Harem? Harem. look like again? Oh, uh, he's dressed in a a black suit with a black turtleneck. He's got uh, it's almost like a goatee, but it's not really connected here. And then some stubble, kind of salt and peppery. And then his hair is kind of slicked a little to the side, but back into the side. Okay. Groovy. I'm kind of like wave you upstairs towards my office. All right. So I'm going to go that way, and Let's then see. Hakan will stand in front of the door. He nods and. Uh, so. Ventress, how is this early night Hello, treating you? Pretty well. Money's rolling in already. People are out of class, heading straight over here. I think I'm going to have a good night. Is, what about yourself? What brings you to my domain? It is very loud in here. I don't think I could do any reading here. <laughs> Probably not. Would you like to go downstairs and relax a little bit? I think I would. Yeah, I can downstairs. I can barely hear myself think here. <laughs> I would <laughs> Yeah, it probably is really loud knowing me. Music, techno everywhere. I'm gonna take him to the downstairs kindred only territory. And that is a lot quieter. No disco techno, nothing going on. <laughs> you see kind of like contrast more Black and silver gray walls and furniture, a nice little bar in case anyone feels like regular drinking, and then other people to drink from if you choose. You're welcome here. Right, well, I'm my thanks for the offer, but I'm good for now. It's not really a shortage here. Nah, thankfully. I hear it's pretty bad on the other oh. side though. I don't know how they do that. Apparently, I've been Hearing a few things every now and then. Hopefully it won't drift over here. Oh, I doubt it. We have way too much current control over here to let that come this way. Most definitely. I wonder. Do you think they'll th that they'll lose control over there? Did they ever have control? Well, the control they think that they have. We always let everyone have their own type of illusion of happiness. Well, if when you put it that way, I think they like not having control. Mm. Just a little thought that's, that passed my mind. That's their illusion of happiness, as you put it. <laughs> cool. Well, she's just gonna drift back off. Well, let's go ahead and uh, move back to Ethan. So, Ethan, what are you up to currently? Now that a little bit of time um, has passed. So, being sort of fairly new to Istanbul, I might go and take in some of the sites. Right. One of the main attractions are the tallest buildings in Istanbul. Uh, you know, they're called the Skyland Towers. There are two sets of them. Uh, you are somewhat familiar with these towers. Not favorably though as some would say um it is also around this time that a unknown number pops up on your phone and it states hey are you in the area i'm gonna reply with Seeing you've got hold of me, are you watching me? And sort of look around to see if there's anyone nearby. Give me a perception check. Is 
The only thing that mm -hmm. you... The only thing that you see are a couple of individuals leaving the building and getting in to a rather nice looking Porsche and a motorcycle. But you don't, they're not watching you. They're not paying any attention to you. Um. In that case, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna phone the number. It takes it a couple of rings before your parental unit's voice picks up. You can hear a what sounds like a s furniture being smashed in the background. And you hear a response. No, I'm not really watching you. I just, I know what goes on in my area. Not a plane takes off, not a plane lands without me knowing about it. Oh, no, but you're delighted to see me again. It has been a while. I am wondering what we owe the honor of this visit. However, there have been some things that have come to my attention that you would be interested in. Let's say for now we let bygones be bygones. It's time to win me over and then I'm going back to doing my own thing hang up and make my way towards the towers. It is also at this time that you, the Coterie, actually receive a message. The message just states, I need you guys to come to my tower as soon as possible. The receptionist already knows to, know, knows to let you up. Uh, I assume we have a name for this contact? Yes, Lucius. I begin, I turn around and I begin walking. <laughs> yeah, when, when Lucius calls, it drop everything and go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I take my dingo and so yes me uh i go ahead and just let my assistant manager know that i'm heading out for the night and she knows what to do for the rest of the night and i head out so sigheim is walking how are yasmin and the other two uh taking off what type of vehicles do you guys drive these days? I have a driver. Well, great. You want to ride with me? Uh, sure. I walked here, so just to feel the nice night. But yeah, we can drive over there. I'll, I'll ride with you. Okay. She has a Jeep. All black Jeep. Doesn't belong in the city, but doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> Those big old bulky ones that can tow a car. She got it. Gonna take you guys a little bit of time to get there. Not too long, but definitely, Ethan, you are the first one up. As you, as the elevator dings and the doors open, you see uh, your father always uses the term toys when he refers to these things. They are very much the spitting image of what you would see in a zombie movie. Rotting flesh, and they're slowly shambling about what looks to be a boardroom of sorts. They seem to be smashing up several of the chairs that were at the far end of the table. They're breaking it up and it seems like they are preparing to try and throw it into a fireplace. You can see the back of Lucius's head as he's looking out the 
large glass window. He turns slowly and he goes, Been a while, son. The prodigal son returns. Uh, you can kind of see the disdain on his face as you mention the prodigal son. And he kind of slowly states, I never, I'll never get used to the fact that the Lansing Sanctum are in power like that. Ugh. Makes my skin crawl. Well, you have your issues, I have mine. That much is true. I mean... But... Let's actually get to why I called you here. I had a couple, I had a few visitors from across the river. You remember who also exists across the river, do you not? I'm aware. Well, it seems like they've been having a couple of issues involving some owls. They were nice enough to come over and let me know that they're having some lovely issues. They also let me know of some other things, but I realize you would probably cheer at the idea of any of our kind being set aflame. Am I really so predictable? Comes with the territory. Within the next few moments, the elevator dings again and the coterie arrives. He goes, ah, my brethren. Oh, good. There's more. Lucius kind of, nice. he kind of gestures at the remaining chairs as the corpse, corpses continue to move and bundle up the remaining wood and literally do chuck it into a fireplace. Are you doing some renovating? I had some filth visit and, you know, sometimes you just can't get the stain of certain things out of fabric. Oh, I know exactly what you mean. He... You can... Give me a... Um, actually, give me a... Wits plus empathy. Say wits... Empathy. One success. You hear a small measure of disdain in his voice as he speaks to you. Mm. He notes it, but doesn't let it show that he noticed. <laughs> He's like, well, now that all of you are together, I can discuss more openly. I want you to work together. Some interesting information has come to my ears. First of all, let us take a moment to celebrate the fact that all hell has broken loose across the river, apparently. Ah, so the rumors are true. Oh. That sounds fun. More than there was. Yes, more than there True. was. The Strix have arrived in the city. The Strix oh. are here? Yes. I don't know on this side of the river, but definitely on the other side of the river. Well, they can stay there. They want, though. Yeah, if, if only. Those creatures <laughs> are... Is it just one? Is it many? Unknown. Hmm. You know, the their reconnaissance was probably poor at best. However, that also leads to another incident. 
How much are you aware of their situation across the river in regards specifically to their missing leader? Not much, other than them being rambunctious. He probably decided to get smart and jump ship before they actually do something. Hmm. If only. Well, the reason I mention this is it seems like there's a few of them that want to blame us. <laughs> sure. As if they we... are dumb these days. What's going on over there? Paranoia, the beast being what it is. So, it seems like a few of them are planning on trying to start a little tussle with us. He, he makes eye contact with uh, Seekheim. I would request that you put down any of them that dare set foot on this side. Outside of the f four or five, he kind of waves his hand like this, that came and visited me earlier. They will be visiting the warehouse, our special stock. I've allowed it, so don't worry about them. That was the same warehouse that I was at earlier, was it not? Yes. Yeah, I figured as much. Um, yeah, I was just patrolling near there earlier tonight. Nothing out of the ordinary. A young vampire roaming, but what much could he really get up to? He nods. If it was earlier, it definitely was not them. I will say that because they left here roughly 30, maybe an hour ago, 30 minutes to an hour ago. So, it was not them. So, we have a couple of options here, and I'm going to leave the majority of the discretion to you guys. And then he makes a gesture at Ethan. This is Ethan. He is an acquaintance of mine. We have worked together in the past. He will be assisting you. He is capable. As you wish. Babysitter? No. He's capable, as I stated. As as we look at him, do we get any sense sense about him, supernatural vampire? What? You do not feel any predatory aura. Which... I might have my dog Loki kind of eye him real quick. Not in a somewhat aggressive way. A slight hackles up. Any reaction? Um, how close is the dog? <laughs> I'm about to get hit. Not breathing in your face. <laughs> I yeah, I was going to say, um, uh, if it's close enough, sight, so however. If, if it's close enough, hold out, hold out hands, sniff, and. No, nah, I don't think he's that close to you. Like, maybe oh, a good okay. six feet from you. Getting a little floofy. Hmm. But that is okay. definitely something that does come to the attention of all of you guys, is there is no predatory aura from Ethan. Which is unusual, to say the least. And we're supposed to be working with him. What, what, uh, what does he do? What do you do, Ethan? Generally, I set you on fire, but apparently I'm in a different business for the time being. Oh, he's feisty. I like him. <laughs> of course you do, Yasmin. <laughs> All right. 
Hey. When would you like us, just speaking of Lucian, when would you like us to take care of this scrapyard fight, I should say? Well, one, I want to make sure our feeding stock is secured. Do whatever you need, do whatever you think is necessary to secure that stock. I doubt they know our warehouse locations that we are keeping our stock, but on the off chance, I want to secure it. Two, if there seems to be any stricks, I want reports. Three, should any of the riffraff show up, I want them dealt with. Failing three, I want to counterattack immediately. One of them is a new person to the city named Mikhail. He owns a location known as the Night Shift just across the river. It's a nightclub. If you want to call it that. He grimaces. Be that as it may. That is what they use for their Elysium. I would like to hit it if they hit us. It being Elysium, I would expect that any sort of leadership, you can kind of see him roll his eyes as he says that, would be there. Plus any enforcers. And that is when I am going to actually make a roll here. If anybody wants to contest this role, please make please make a perception check. Now, uh, uh, the only exception to this role is actually Ethan. You do not need to roll a perception for this. Well, what's perception again? Wits. Wits plus composure. Now, you say contested, like, is this just... We're not gonna, like, get shanked if we fail the contested or something. Yeah. <laughs> like, what, like, what is am I this gonna offend him? Like... Is this... Uh, you know, I'll do it. I could probably win. Is this perception just to see if he's using a power, then we choose if we want to resist it? How is this working? No, just... Oh. Just roll your perception if you I'm want to... from just the dice. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> he is not very subtle as he shares a knowing glance when he says that with Ethan what did he say again? that any sort of enforcer would also be there okay would likely be there I should rephrase sorry As for that, oh. he he then actually extends his arm out, decides it's time for everybody but Siegheim's dosage. Understood. We'll report to you by the end of the night. We'll be downstairs. At least I'll be downstairs waiting for him. <laughs> yeah, Lucius. Meant, like, <laughs> Luc Lucius goes. Oh, You're really? <laughs> he goes. Oh, so you really want to feel the veneculum tear at you then? Are we supposed out of game? What are we supposed to stay like connected twenty four seven? Do we always have to come back? That's how something? he has it. Yeah, you He's guys are. Oh. You're blood bonded to him. I mean, if you want the withdrawal <laughs> symptoms, we can. Oh, it's gonna, no, it's gonna no, suck. No, no. <laughs> eh, it's gonna suck. Uh, I, I took a merit accidentally, and now I don't have to deal with it. Oh. <laughs> what merit was that? We gonna talk after this. 
I will say, only joke, only joke. <laughs> I mean, it is completely your decision not to. I'm first in line. All right. Karen will be second, I guess. <laughs> oh, such I'll be last. <laughs> All right. Um, as you guys had just woken up from your day sleep, you guys obviously spent a point of IT. You gain that point of IT back. <laughs> Where are we at? Out of curiosity. 15 if we're at 5 on potency? Yeah, you would be at max Actually, minus 1. All right. Just because day sleep takes one yeah, vitality yeah. to do. <laughs> so max blood potency. No, max vitality, not blood potency. Vitality, excuse me. Which is 15 at uh, blood potency 5. And I really hope I don't have to go up in blood potency, then I'm going to starve. <laughs> All right, so he, after you have taken his vitae, he kind of returns to looking out. It is at this point that you see the shambling masses actually manage to light the fire in the fireplace and start burning the furniture. And then you kind of see with a wave of his hand, they throw themselves into the fire as well. <laughs> the trash takes so, uh, itself out. Is fire a frenzy roll? Because <laughs> I'm going to fail it. <laughs> <laughs> it is not being used it's to burn fire. you. Fire. Your beast is definitely snarling at it, but it's not enough to invoke frenzy since it's not being used against you. Karim is still going to oh. stand behind Sighelm. <laughs> I don't know if that's a smart idea, friend. <laughs> <laughs> How sensitive are you? Uh, I'm a gangrel with one humanity. My role to resist frenzy is capped at one dice. <laughs> oh yeah, well, never mind. Why am I talking? I'm one humanity too. <laughs> I just took notice. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, but you're not. Yeah. You're not capped to resist frenzy. Well, so then again, against the gangrel I, curse. I shouldn't talk. I'm at two. <laughs> uh, we were actually we all over. a little crazy up in here. Oh yes, everybody oh, is very, very low humanity. So all what of the is, um... <laughs> except for that one, <laughs> except for Ethan. Except for that guy. All right, we feed him to the Strix <laughs> then when we find him. <laughs> As you guys all board the elevator and it starts heading back down. Is there any conversation amongst you? So new guy, where are you from? Where you been? And how you done, Lucius? Wait, we go back a while. I noticed he decided to keep our relationship on the uh, quiet back in there, so I'm assuming he probably doesn't want you to tell me. He doesn't want me telling you where I come from. Ooh, he swings that way. Okay, don't go tell me. <laughs> she gives him a wink. <laughs> Miss Red. <laughs> Ian, <you're right>. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyways, and that's actually a uh, po uh something worth mentioning for Ethan you pretty much feel like you're riding an elevator with a bunch of corpses especially with how pale and cold these bodies are with their low humanity they are extremely pale their eyes are pretty bloodshot Bold are you to you assume um, you can see my skin. <laughs> true, except for the man walking around in plate armor, which is extremely clanky. Clank, clank, clank. No metal detectors for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna... What have I got myself into? Take a cigarette out of the packet. Tap it in the box. All right, so we've been given a couple objectives. 
You have just finished listening to this week's episode of Vampire the Requiem 2nd Edition Bloody Waters, part of the Domain Gaming's Contagion Anthology, written and told by Wyvarian. A special thanks to you, the listener. If you wish to continue supporting us, subscribe, like, and share. And as always, comments are welcomed. Until the next chapter, how will you satisfy that thirst? And with what?